In Chapter 2, we're going to be organizing and summarizing data, which is a fancy way of saying that we're going to be making tables and graphs and charts, things like that. All right, Section 2.1, we're going to organize qualitative data. Now, qualitative data, as we learned in Section 1.1, are data that are words and categories. So that's what this section is going to be about. Now, if you're thinking, well, what about the numerical sections? That's, those are sections 2.2 two and 2.3. Um, All right, so the first thing we need to do is learn a definition, which is a frequency distribution. A frequency distribution is a table, chart, or graph that lists each possible value of a variable along with the corresponding frequency of that value. Now, frequency has a lot of different names. Frequency is kind of the fancy name for it, but we can also call it count or number, um, sometimes total, depending on what we're doing. Um, so those values are those words, excuse me, also represent those values. It's basically just how many, right? So if you're thinking how many are in this group, that's frequency. How many? Now, relative frequency is the proportion of observations within a category. So instead of saying how many, it's what percent are in that category, what fraction are in that category, um, or decimal. Now, fractions and decimals and percents are all kind of interchangeable mathematically. Um, fractions, of course, look like a fraction. They have a numerator and a denominator, those kinds of things. Decimals and percents are very much the same thing, right? Decimals and percents are, um, especially percents, I should say, are more useful for interpretation. So a lot of times we will use percents, but only insofar as it makes it easier for us to explain what we're talking about. Um, so you use whichever is useful, I should say. So they're, they're all equivalent. So I, I meant to write that. I guess I'll write it in purple. So fractions, decimals, percents, they're all equivalent. You use whichever one's convenient or useful. But basically, what you're going to do is you're going to take the frequency for the category and you're going to divide it by the sum of all the frequencies, also known as the total for all the frequencies. And then a relative frequency distribution is just a table or chart that shows those values. So it will have all the categories and the relative frequencies. Simple as that. Okay, so which of these social media applications do you use most? Gather data in the frequency column, then find the relative frequency. And I believe I have some data from a previous semester available. So the values I have from a previous semester, I surveyed my class, are 2, 8, 13, 4, and 2. Now, the first thing I want to do is find the total. That's what this symbol down here means. This symbol is actually the Greek letter capital sigma. It means um, the total, or if you like, the sum, right? S-U-M, because that's sigma. So, and that's the first answer down here, actually. It means we have to add and find the total, right? That's what we're looking for. All right, well, we can just add these up. So 8 and 2 is 10. 10 plus 13 is 23, 27, 28, 29. So the total down here is 29. And of course, we could always check that in Desmos if we're not comfortable adding in our heads like I just did. So I went to Desmos.com. Actually, let me just show you real quickly. I go to Desmos.com and It'll say, what do you want to do? And I just click the graph and calculator, which is this big blue button right here. So I clicked that. All right, so then I can say to Desmos, I want 2 plus 8 plus 13 plus 4 plus 2. And it'll tell me right here that the answer is 29. So great, lovely. 
Now I want to do the fraction. Well, the fraction is really easy because what you're going to do is take the frequency and divide it by the total. So it's 2 divided by 29, 8 divided by 29, and so on. And you can see it's kind of not as useful. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. 2 over 29, it's fine. But what does that mean? Uh, you know, it's a little hard to know. But I can tell that if I add all these up, fractions, the way fractions work is you add their numerators and leave the denominators alone. So it's 2 over 29 plus 8 over 29, which we know would make 29 over 29, also known as 1, by the time that we reach the bottom. So that's our total. Just to make this clear, I'm going to put an extra thick line right here so you can understand that that last, that last row is really for the totals and sums. All right, now what about the decimal? Well, for that, we would just use a calculator. We don't know those values off the top of our head. So we're going to grab decimos, and decimos will help us. So we just say, hey, what's 2 divided by 29? And it tells us it's that decimal right there. Now, in the table, I don't think I listed the number of decimal places I wanted, but I think I'll go with 3. So and this is a good time to review rounding a little bit. If you want three decimal places, the third decimal place is actually the eight. But in math class, when they say three decimal places, they always want, I always want regular rounding, <laughs> normal rounding. So what you do is you look to the next number after the eight, which is a nine. That nine is a higher number. It's five or higher. So we would round up. So this would become 0 0.069. Right, so then if I do the next one, 8 divided by 29, it looks like it's 275, but if I look to the next number, that's an 8. And that's a high number again, so I would go 276. So my first one would be 0 0.069. My second one would be 0 0.276, because the 5 would get rounded up by that 8. I don't have to do a different one each time. I can just retype that numerator right there. So it's 13 divided by 29, which is 0. 0.448. The next number after the 8 is 2, so we're actually going to leave it at 448. 2 is a low number, so 0. 0.448. The rule is that you round up if the number in the next decimal place is 5 or higher. And since this is not 5 or higher, it's, it's 4 or lower, we just leave 448 as it is. And the last one we're going to do is 4. So let me do 4 divided by 29. So it's 137, but that 9 is high, so that's going to round it to a 138. All right, so let me write that one in and show it to you. There we go. 0 0.138. And this last one is the same as the first one, right? They have the same frequency. They have the same relative frequency. So it's 0 0.069. Now, if we played our cards right, um, these should add up to 1. Now, that said, we rounded to the third decimal place. So it's possible that we'll be 1.001 or 0.999. We can check it with decimos. So let me grab decimos again. And I can add those numbers up. I'm just going to delete these things because we don't have to look at them. All right, 0 0.069. 276, 448, 138, and 069. Oh, and it did add exa exactly to 1. But again, sometimes that doesn't happen because we've rounded. So don't be surprised if every so often it's, it's just a tiny bit off. But it would be off in that third decimal place because that's where we rounded to. So it could be like 1.001 0 .001 or 0.999. And that's no big deal. That's called rounding error. All right, now what about percents? Well, percents are per 100. Cent is 100, in case you never knew that, right? So cent, there's 100 cents in a dollar. So per cent means per 100. What that means is that we're going to move the decimal to the hundredths place, which is not where it currently is. It's currently in the ones position, right, between the one and the tenths. That's the standard position. But for a percent, we move the decimal two spots over. Two spots because that's tenths hundredths, right? Because percent means per hundred. It means divide by a hundred. 
Okay, so what's that going to mean? Well, I move it one, two spots over, it becomes 6.9%. One, two spots over is 27.6%. 44.8%. 44.8%. Sorry, my A got weird there. <laughs> I'm going to have to fix that. It looks all janky. Oop, I threw my white out across my table as I was trying to do this. There we go. I'm not sure that's better. And then 13.8%. There we go. I can make an 8. And 6.9%. And of course, these would add to 100%. Because 100% is 1. Right? They're 1 and the same. So I'll make a little note um, right here. That's important for us in Chapter 5 that you know that. So that note, 1.00 is the same thing as 100%. Oh, and 1 is 1.00. We just don't bother writing 0 .00 all the time. But they're all the same. All right, which was the most social, most used, excuse me, social media app for our class? Um, well, it was Snapchat. Uh, Snapchat had the highest frequency. So Snapchat. And then, um, I didn't ask this, but it has the highest frequency. Highest, that's how we know it's the most used. Just in case you're wondering. And then interpret Snapchat's relative frequency in the context of the situation. Okay, no problem. So if I'm looking at Snapchat and I want to do the relative frequency, the relative frequency is the decimal or percent, right? Technically, it's also the fraction, but that's not really good for interpretation, right? Interpretation, honestly, we usually use percents. If we're going to have to write it out in English, that's what um, percents are useful for. So let me just highlight that. So interpretation tends to be percents more than anything else. Okay, so if I look at Snapchat, I would say 44.8% of these students had Snapchat as their most, or as their favorite, I should say, as their favorite social media app. 